welcome back. Uh, I'm so glad that you're back and joining me again. Uh, I thought I would uh, just quickly address the possible question uh, of what is intuitive painting? Uh, many of you who found your way here probably already have some idea, oh, puppy jumped down, um, of what intuitive painting is, but I thought I would just give a quick explanation for those of you that may not realize or have any sort of experience with intuitive painting, um, that it is the process of, instead of planning a painting, instead of standing in front of an empty paper or an empty canvas and thinking, I'm going to paint a thing, which is how most of us start paintings and why painting for a lot of people who've never done it before is so intimidating. Um, intuitive painting is the process of painting by feeling instead of thinking. Um, so you're basically standing yourself in front of an empty canvas, empty paper, some sort of surface that's ready to go, and instead of thinking, okay, I'm gonna paint a thing. You think to yourself, what color feels good right now? Any color, it doesn't even have to be something you like. I've had a lot of people start with colors that they genuinely hate. I gen generally don't paint with a lot of oranges and yellows and you can see behind me this one ended up having oranges and yellows and I love this painting, so who knows? But you go into the process without a plan, which is so hard for a lot of people. It was hard for me in the beginning, I have to admit. Like, having a background of mainly illustration and portrait work, it was terrifying to go in to a painting process without any sort of plan. I, oh, it was like pulling teeth. But <clears throat> it really helps you to let go, um, to let go of expectations in yourself, to let go of being in control of everything, um, <laughs> especially right now. There's a lot of stuff we're not in control of, but it really, the entire intuitive painting process is based on feeling instead of thinking. And we don't often get permission to just feel, to just explore the feelings. And with this process, it is a remarkable tool to be able to uncover exactly what we're feeling and look at it, deal with it. It's, it can feel terrifying because most of us never really stop to look at those things. And if we do, well, you know. It gets horrifying, but with this process, it gives you a safe place to put those feelings. You can put them on a canvas or on a piece of paper. You can look at them, you can acknowledge them, and you can either incorporate them into your painting, or you can let them go by painting over. There's no right or wrong. There's no, you cannot make a mistake. So all the judgment that we tend to give ourselves, all the time that we spend saying, I can't paint, or I don't know how to do this, or what if I get it wrong? Because, you know, we all have those feelings all the time. With this process, it gives you a way to be able to set up a mantra for yourself in your head saying, I can't get it wrong. I just have to try. All I'm doing is trying. And you can put another color and another color and another layer and keep building until, and it sounds completely counterintuitive, but eventually what happens is that you get a painting that incorporates everything you were feeling from the beginning of the process all the way through to the end. And it's beautiful. Whether it looks like something or nothing or has any sort of actual images that are recognizable to you in them, in the finished painting, you will always know what it means to you. You will always be able to have that reminder, and it's a beautiful reminder, instead of it being locked away in your head and 
surrounded by all of this negative thought, negative judgment, it becomes something that you can look at and say, I did that. I can do this. And it, it's a huge creative lesson. It's a huge life lesson. It's something that it opens up pathways in yourself that you may not have been able to access before. <clears throat> so for me, intuitive painting is the ability to go within and express it in ways that you might not have ever considered before. Uh, the process itself is purely creative. There is no right or wrong. There, it, you, you can't make a mistake. You can't, and you'll hear me say that a lot. I will repeat it many times because it will take time to sink in. Um, you can't make a mistake. Uh, you could make muddy colors. It happens. It could look like a big pile of mud on a canvas and then you wait for it to dry and you add new colors, new layer, start over. It's both creative exercise and life lesson. And the further you go along with the process, the more you learn, the more you explore. You begin to see patterns in what you've painted. You begin to see parts of it that you really enjoy and you paint around those parts and keep them. And then you paint the parts that you've gotten rid of may turn into something else in the, in the next layer. So it's a constant evolution until you end up with a finished painting with all of these messages in it for you that maybe no one else will understand. But you will always be able to look at it and think, I can see in this section what I was feeling when I painted it. I can see in that section what I was feeling when I painted it. The painting as an overall becomes a cohesive message to yourself of what you can accomplish simply by taking it one brush stroke, one step at a time. So I just thought I'd give you that little explanation and uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page and that you understand that you can't do anything wrong doing this process. And a lot of us have that, oh my goodness, I can't believe that I purchased a painting class and I don't paint feeling. And that's fine. But you won't feel that way when you're done. <laughs> I'll see you in a few moments and we'll do a nice meditation and uh, we'll have a little bit of a connection uh, circle doing using the red thread that I mentioned earlier. And... Uh, then I'll go through some of the materials that uh, I requested in the materials list that you have on hand. Uh, but I'm just going to go through some of the, the brushes and things and just a little bit of the, the different materials you can use to paint because it might not always be a paintbrush. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> 